Ciao and welcome to Geo's Paintbrush, where five minutes is all it takes to be blown away by one of the world's greatest artists. Surrealistic painting began in the 1920s, in the wake of the First World War, part of a larger philosophical movement against the realities that resulted from the high value society placed on rationality, which, to the surrealists, resulted in a mad, destructive, and essentially shallow, one-dimensional world. The movement followed not long after the birth of modern psychology, and in the context of Freud and Jung, the Surrealists sought to broaden as well as deepen the human understanding of reality by exploring the subconsciousness and dreams in their art. As a result of this focus on subconscious thoughts and dreams, which after all are real too, Surrealists often juxtaposed objects and beings in their work that are not, in the rational world, associated with one another. This technique, as well as a refusal on the part of these artists to employ traditional symbolism and color and form in ways recognizable to those approaching their work from the point of view of the so-called real world, well, this is precisely what can make one, when confronted with surrealistic art, confused, lost, left out, maybe even a little frustrated. But it doesn't have to be that way. Encountering a surrealistic painting is like experiencing a dream or getting just a hint of something below the surface of our consciousness. It's largely hidden from us, but it emerges just enough to pique our interest, to evoke a feeling, that is, if we allow it to do so. I've learned to keep it simple when it comes to surrealistic art, to focus on the images individually first, what they are and how they're portrayed, with no attempt to conjure up a rational explanation for why they're there together. Then I look for the juxtapositions of the objects or figures. The fact that they don't typically go together in the rational world is not at all relevant. The questions become, what are they? What do they do? Why do they exist? How are they similar and how are they different from one another? And don't expect to walk away from a surrealistic painting with a satisfying exposition on what the work means. That's not at all what surrealistic artists were trying to do to match our expectations, and it's not how the subconscious works. In today's show, we'll explore a wonderful painting by the Belgian surrealist René Magritte called Time Transfixed, painted in 1938 and part of the permanent collection of the Art Institute of Chicago. It's a fascinating and fun example of a surrealistic masterpiece. Thanks for joining us. Magritte, known for juxtaposing objects from everyday life in the 20th century, as opposed to the fantastical, otherworldly images most surrealists developed in their paintings, in Time Transfixed creates a strangely unified image, strange at least in the carefully deliberate rational world. The image is composed of two objects recognized universally in the modern world, a locomotive and a fireplace. It seems to me the sense of unity achieved here, of these two very different objects appearing perfectly as one, that is, after one lets the rational world go and just experiences them as shapes and colors, as things, entirely apart from their non-relationship in the rational world, is rooted in the beautiful and deceivingly simple manner in which Magritte portrays them. This scene is clean, uncluttered, vivid, and so stark, so realistic that it almost seems fake. There's the spotless white marble fireplace, the neat, evenly colored wooden floor, sparsely decorated mantle and the powerful locomotive, black body, white smoke, emerging from the fireplace as if it's a railroad tunnel. The unity of composition achieved and time transfixed also seems related to the wonderfully playful and ingenious way in which Magritte affixes the locomotive to the wall of the fireplace, making it appear like just another object among objects with a typical fireplace in an otherwise barren room. I ordinarily don't recall my dreams, but I do have a sense of their feel, the quality of the staging, if you will, or of their color and setting. And I think Magritte captures that dreamlike state in this work, by no means an easy accomplishment. In a sense, his insistence on using ordinary rather than extraordinary objects makes his work appear even more dreamlike, since these are precisely the kind of scenes commonly found in our dreams. So let's consider the two images juxtaposed in this painting. First, there is the fireplace, complete with mantle, clock, and about 8 o'clock, not clear if it's morning or night, 
two simple candlesticks, and a large mirror above the mantel. Setting aside the presence of the locomotive for a second, there's not too much unique about the scene, except perhaps the remarkable cleanliness of the fireplace. Has this thing ever been used? And the classical symmetry exhibited. But then there's that locomotive. On one level, with steam pouring from its furnace, appearing in rapid motion, emerging from the fireplace wall. But on another level, seeming to be affixed to the wall, frozen, unmoving, no different than the candlesticks or clock or mirror, floor or fireplace itself. While a locomotive moves people and things, and can be both still and in motion depending on the circumstances, a fireplace built into a wall suggests home, warmth, maybe a sense of place. And while in the rational world time keeps moving, relentless, endless even, in the world of the subconscious and in dreams, are the rules of time really the same? Magritte spent considerable time wrestling with his titles for his paintings, and given this care, the title here, Time Transfixed, is likely relevant. The dictionary definition of the word transfixed is twofold. First, it can mean to pierce through or impale, as with a pointed weapon. Second, it means to render motionless. I think this title is brilliant. Here, in this painting, Magritte pierces our expectations of reality and of art and brings us to another world, an alternative reality, if you will, making two ordinarily disassociate and completely known objects seem unified, whole, in perfect harmony with one another. And in this world, time is rendered motionless, moving, perhaps, but not getting anywhere a common feeling in human dreams, probably universal in the Jungian sense of the word. It's been said that Magritte's work looks so simple and yet possesses such complexity. And while I'm not ashamed to admit I haven't always seen it, as it begins to emerge for me now, it's pretty cool. And I suspect that, like our subconscious, this painting may reveal itself a little more over time if we remain open to it. Thanks for joining us. I can picture it. Like I could when I was small And it's so picturesque Looking through the crystal ball Can you picture this? And it is